Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to another reading vlog. So this is vlog four. This is the last vlog of 31 books in 31 days in August. It is the 22nd today. So this is going to be a slightly longer vlog than the other ones um, because obviously there's nine days left of the month so I'm not going to do a two day vlog at the end. So we have how many books? We are on 20 books at the moment. So we have 11 books to read this week and nine days. That is definitely doable. I'm very, very excited about the next nine books I'm gonna read because I'm gonna try and read some good ones, hopefully all five stars, because we had a mixed bunch this month. I mean, they're not gonna be all five stars, are they? But hopefully all four or fives, that'd be nice. I've been reading a lot of books that aren't on my TBR and I definitely plan on going back to a couple of TBR books because I feel like I need to get a move on with these. My TBRs are like 60 books, which oof, not for me. So yeah, nothing much more to say other than welcome to a new vlog and let's hope this week is a productive one. Okay, so I have a day full of editing videos today. Like I've just filmed, as you've seen the intro to the video, I've filmed a book haul, blah, blah, blah. So I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of editing today, which means I don't probably have a lot of time to read, but I fancy picking up at least one book. Even if I don't finish it, I'd like to start it. So I've been having to think about what book I want to pick up. And I've got a couple of ideas, but really I don't really know what I want. So I have this mug that is absolutely brim, full to the brim, with my TBR. I've done this because I fancy starting a new vlog series where I pick three books out of my mug and I read those three. I don't know. I don't know when that vlog's coming, but for obviously now, we're doing these 31 books challenge. It won't be until at least next month um but I do fancy picking my read out of here and just seeing I mean I might not actually go with it but we'll see so it'll be a good test run I mean I have read some of the books that are in here since because I didn't think that part through but it's fine I'm gonna dig down okay I've got one please be something good okay The Hating Game, I've already read it. <laughs> that was one of the first books I read for this challenge. There you go, at least I've got one of the books I've read out already. <laughs> oh geez, okay, a couple came out. Let's just put them back in. Okay. Happily Ever After. <laughs> this book is haunting me. I don't wanna read that today, but fine, I will. So Happily Ever After is this collection of short stories from the select selection as I mean on my TBR. I think it's the oldest book on my TBR after the Throne of Glass books. Um, so yeah, it makes sense that that would come up. <sighs> fine, fine, even the mug's calling me out at this point. I will listen to it today, I'll read it today. For goodness sakes. <laughs> so I'm currently reading Happily Ever After. I am like a hundred and something pages in. Really enjoying it so far, I mean, as much as you can enjoy short story novellas but I'm just editing some videos so I'm gonna take a break edit some videos and then I'm gonna I mean I was gonna grab lunch but it's 20 to 5 so maybe I'll, maybe I'll just wait for dinner um but yeah I'm gonna carry on reading this probably into this evening and keep you updated I finished it finally I gave it three stars I thought it was good I think if you're a massive fan of the selection which I am You'll enjoy it and you'll like the extra content. If you're not, don't bother because it's like not really worth it. It was like a four star for most of the way. And then by the end, I was just like, okay, I'm over it now. So I gave it a three. It was good. I'm glad I read it. Now I need another book. I'm not going to finish another one tonight because it's literally like 10 p.m. So I'm just going to grab my little cup. Where is it? So I've grabbed my little cup. I'm going to pick another book from it because I still can't be bothered. The Darkening. I think I could read that. I could read that. This book, this is the n second newest fairy loot, The Darkening by Sonia Mara. It is almost 400 pages, but it's a YA fantasy, so I feel like I could do it. So off I go. Hi, it's been a few days. Um, I've been sick as a dog. I have not been well at all, and I still don't feel great. Um, but. It has meant my reading's taken a little bit of a backseat. I mean, I've been trying my best because we are at the end of the challenge. So like, I've got to keep up, otherwise I won't pass. Um, so it is now Saturday, the 27th. <clears throat> Sorry, my, my voice hurts. Um, Saturday the 27th, and I am at 24 
books, which is not bad. Wait, it's three books behind. Um, so I DNF the darkening. I know I last spoke to you when I pulled that out of the hat, or out of the mug. I DNF that. It just I knew it was just going to be a three stars, and it was taking me long to get through because I didn't care. So I thought instead of just number one giving the book a bad rate, like well, th not a bad rating, but a three or less. Um, why not just let it go? So I've let it go. I've read the Steminist trilogy uh, by Ali Hazelwood because I wanted to see if Love on the Brain was just really bad on its own or if all of her books were bad except for the Love Hypothesis. But I ended up giving the first book, which is Under One Roof, five stars. I gave, um, what's the second one? Stuck With You, four stars. And I gave Below Zero, three stars. I think the problem is they're all so similar that you kind of get bored by the third one. But I read them all in two days. So that was good. That kind of like helped with the fact I hadn't been reading a lot. But it is now obviously the 27th and I've got seven books to read by the end of the month. Four more days, seven books to read. Today, <clears throat> yesterday, I was literally in bed all day. I didn't read. I didn't do anything. I literally stared at watching TV and watching Gilmore Girls <clears throat> because I just don't feel well. And I couldn't sleep and I couldn't do anything. So feeling a bit iffy <clears throat> and my voice is really struggling to keep talking for this much. <clears throat> um... So today I have got some catching up to do because like, you know, you know what it's like when you run a house, like, well, I don't know if any of you know what it's like to, to own your own house, like live on your own. It's so difficult to like keep on top of cleaning and one day not cleaning can kind of cause chaos. So I have quite a lot to do today, but I'm really sick of reading audiobooks. Like I'm not in an audiobook mood anyway. And then I've been trying to do them because it's the only way you'll get through this challenge and still have to do the things you have to do. So I'm hoping to have a physical day mostly. So I've picked three options. The Younglings, because I do have to read this and review it this month. So I'm running out of time. Um, I have read a very small amount of this. I am 27 pages in. So I read it enough to answer the questions. The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I really want to start this series now that I own all three books. So I'm hoping to pick that up today, maybe if I fancy it. And the other one is The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams, because again, I only just bought this and I really, really fancy it. And I think it'll be easy to read a romance. So one fantasy, two romances. Now in an ideal world, I would finish all three of these. And that is very possible with my reading speed <clears throat> because it's only like half 11 right now, I think. Um, so I could read until like I go to bed and I could finish all these. But I don't know if I'm going to because I don't want to make myself sick. So I'm just going to do whatever I can and try and also maybe pick up an audiobook of something else to like kickstart me into, into being able to clean and stuff. But yeah, these are my three options for the day. So hopefully going to go and read as much of this as possible. And I will come back to you to let you know how much I did achieve, how much I did achieve today. I don't know why I keep filming when there's god awful lighting. I do apologise. But I wanted to update you on the couple of books I read recently. So I binged the whole series by Helen Huang. So it starts with The Kiss Quotient, uh, The Bride Test and The Heart Principle. I had bought them all, so I decided to just get them read. Um, didn't love any of these, to be honest. The first one I gave three stars. I think this was my favourite of the three. It was quite interesting, but I feel like it's about... Autistic characters, the whole series has autistic autistic characters, which I really enjoyed that representation. But this first book had somebody who was a sex worker and he he had to he was in sex, he didn't want to be in sex work, which is fine, but he did it because he had to be to pay off his parents' bills. That is fine that the character did not want to be part of sex work. That is fine. You don't have to like your job. However, I don't enjoy the disapproval towards sex workers and the sex industry in this book like it felt very anti-sex work and I just don't get that like just because the character didn't want to that's fine it's more the talk in general that it was it just wasn't nice so I, I like reading like positive books about that kind of thing like the roommate like after reading this and how positive it is towards sex workers I certainly don't want to be reading something like this it feels like a step in the wrong direction so really didn't like that part, but I did really like the representation of someone who was autistic. So I was like, mm, I'm in an R and three star overall. And I thought the story was okay. The Bride Test. Now this was definitely a low three, but I did give it a three. We follow Kai, who again is autistic and his mum is trying to find a wife for him abroad for some reason. Find someone, flies them over, and then they live together. 
eh, there's just nothing to say. It was just very bland. I can't, I'm not a known voices reviewer, so I can't say anything about the autistic representation. I suggest you find someone who can. I just thought the romance in general was just meh. And then the third book. Hated this. Um, I've found a lot of people saying the same thing, that they hated Anna, the main character. Um, a lot of people were saying because of like some of the things she said and the fact that she was annoying. Well, that's not really fair, I think, because I think that's attacking her because of her autistic tendencies. What I didn't like her for was the fact she was a cheater and there's no way to... Um, there's no way to justify someone being a cheater. Like, she cheated on her partner. Um, so whatever. It just wasn't good at all. It also was very offensive to people with germophobia and OCD. Um, me. So <laughs> I'm not very happy with that at all. And I was really offended. So this got a two star from me. And this series overall is definitely a big fat no. Don't recommend. Will be unhauling. I don't understand the hype it gets. I mean, actually, to be fair, I've seen a lot of hype, but looking on Goodreads, actual reviews, a lot of people found this offensive and not very good. So that's fine. Um, but I do think it's important we have more representation like these. So I would really like to find a series that has some representation without being offensive to other people, um, such as sex workers and OCD sufferers. It's just not right. Um, it's also a lot of Asian representation, which was nice. I just enjoy that too, from every single book, which is fun. But yeah, I really wanted more from these books and I did not get it. What else did I read? I read Say Yes by Elle Kennedy. It's just like a little novella about two people who meet at a wedding and goes from there. So that was just a really simple read. I read it on audio. It was cool. And now I'm reading After Dark. I can't remember who it's written by. I have a an arc and I did try and read it before it came out and I got 6% of the way in before I stopped which isn't great not because it was bad but because there's this one character called Cass and she's a teenage girl and I should probably tell you the plot first it's all about men cannot go out after dark they've been curfewed because of how many murders and rapes there were mostly done by men and so they now cannot come out at night and crime rates have dropped and obviously the older generation who have lived with the men being out at night have know the dangers of men and so want there to be this curfew and these issues whereas the younger generation who are such as Cass don't want them to be don't want them to be tagged and curfewed because they don't know how much danger men can be to them because they've never had to deal with it because the men have been tagged and curfewed so um i get both sides of the argument it's very interesting to see it's very interesting to uncover however Cass is so annoying i cannot even tell you i hate her so i stopped reading it the first time because of her and even though i have gone back to it and i am enjoying it i'm at 40 percent she is still so annoying to the point where she puts me off reading the book so that's not ideal definitely getting a little bit annoyed by her there's been this murder so you i don't really care about that though i care more about the discussions of men <laughs> so i'm enjoying my read but yeah i don't really have any updates on it right now because even though i'm 40 percent of the way through nothing's happened i'm not sure what i'm gonna read after that but i should let you know when i have finished okay so i have finished after dark i just have a lot of like thoughts about this book so i've had it from my i've had it on my arcs to be off for absolutely ages because the cover definitely leads you to thinking this is a thriller it's about a murder so you think it's about a thriller i'm here to say it is definitely not it is like a dystopian feminist potentially mystery but not really so you have two timelines and um, one a murder has happened and then you're kind of following different people up to the murder but it's a less strict way like when you think of that you think of like them saying like, three days before five days before it's not like that it's just casual like you don't even get told when it is you're just piecing it together slowly i've written down a review on my goodreads so you're more than welcome to go check that out if you fancy actually hearing something that makes sense but i'll try my best it follows a we're in a world where men have a curfew so as of i think seven until seven or something like that they cannot come out of the house they are stuck in their house they all have anklet monitors so that they know when where they are we can track them if they break the curfew they get to go to prison and we follow quite a few different characters, but the main, I'd say, character we follow is Cass, her mother Sarah, 
and their kind of relationship, but we follow other characters as well. Um, it's all like told in third person, so it's quite easy to follow. Cass is a 17-year-old who's completely against this system of men being put in to this curfew and tagged, and she thinks it's like oppression and blah, 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 because she has never lived in a society where men haven't been tagged, whereas her, her, her dad is currently in prison for breaking curfew. So you can see why she would be so emotional about this discussion. Her mother, however, is completely in agreement with it. She's actually got a job as a tagger, so she tags people, the men, and boys get tagged from the age of 10, which is so young. I was quite shocked by that. And at the beginning, I was like, well, this is laughable. You could never put men in a curfew and do this to them. Like, you couldn't do that. But you know what? As you go through the book, the more and more you sit there and think about it, the more it seems plausible and definitely doable. I think this is definitely a controversial book. I think a lot of men would hate this book. I think a lot of women would hate this book. But I also think a lot of people who are open to it would love it. It is all a discussion on domestic abuse against women, sexual abuse against women, the whole trend on Twitter about not all men and it's like yeah of course not of course not but enough men okay so it's all about that it's so good Cass is so unlikable you hate this girl I absolutely despised her she's so naive and silly and dumb and the things she says and the way she acts drive me insane but you watch her have experiences with these men who then show her why men are in this system and she goes from being such a hater of the system to maybe slowly understanding it I'm not saying anything to spoil it but I'm just saying like she does have these experiences and you kind of follow her along her journey however you hate her until the end well I hate her until the end anyway like I just couldn't stand this character which made it very hard to like the story I really love the pacing of the story like I said it's like like two timelines but it's not really it's more of like a fluid book but you know there's jumps but you just don't really see them loved it loved the stories that were interwoven like we saw a lot of different people but they all intertwined and i loved that i in general i just loved everything about it i really thought it was going to be focused on this murder but no the murder is just like a back stance of a plot i think it's just to create a little bit of an intrigue to make you you know to make it into a book when really it's just a political statement which i love i feel like this murder was so predictable from the first half then i found out i was wrong but it was predictable from the second half and i was like oh okay so i know what's gonna happen but i didn't care because that wasn't the main point of the book i just so encourage you to pick up this book if you know abuse against women is something that you would like to you know not not learn more about because you learn nothing it's just a statement about how women are abused by men a lot of the time there's nothing really to learn from it the author's note was quite interesting to give a bit of an insight to the book and talking about the author's personal experience with abuse from men and her father and the reason that she wrote this book and to bring open discussions she didn't share her own statement she just brought up her own discussions of do you think we can live in a society where women continue to be deemed unsafe um and basically how we do live in a man's world it was just such a fascinating book i know it'll rile so many people up um, and that's the intent of the book, I'm sure. Overall, I'm giving it a three stars, which seems so low because I really enjoyed the book. It's just the vibe of getting it. It's just a three star book for me, you know? That is a good rating. I did enjoy it. I had my issues, but overall, I thought it was a very, very good book, a very important book, just very misleading and not what I went into it expecting. So yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Now I'm going to pick up Little Bird. So this is another arc I have and have had for quite a while and haven't read yet so i'm going to try and make some progress um it is actually the 30th today which means tomorrow is the last day but i am busy from morning to night tomorrow i have such a busy day there is no way i'm getting a book read tomorrow maybe a tiny part of it but like not a whole book so today i have to read three books i've read one i've got two more left but it's half three in the afternoon i have nothing else to do with my day but like i have to read fast if I want to get this done today so that is what I'm going to do um but yeah one book down and it was definitely a success I will let you know how this one goes fellas I've done it it is the last day of 31 books in 31 days and I've completed the 31 books challenge I actually finished it yesterday I'm too busy today to have been reading and this is the last day of the challenge so I knew I had to finish it yesterday and I did it I am so happy 
I'm a bit peed off because I've just filled in my spreadsheet and I found out that I'm at like 9,500 pages for the month. If only I'd read 500 more pages, I'd have hit 10k pages. That would have been so cool. But whatever, that doesn't matter. I've read 31 books in 31 days and I'm so happy about it. So to talk you through, I think I gave you the rundown on After Dark yesterday. Well, then I read Little Bird by Tiffany Muro. Uh, I didn't love it. Again, it was an arc I had on that galley and it was super weird. It was like... This woman is depressed, she's just got through like a divorce and she's an alcoholic and she's living on her own, she's really struggling and you see her struggle and her grief over her divorce and losing her dad. It's all a lot and then this skeleton called Skelly appears in her garden and has these vines and like Skelly, um, I don't know what the purpose of Skelly was, it was to teach a protagonist a lesson I think. But I don't understand what happened and I think I somewhat understand the ending but I don't really, I don't get what happened. Um, I, I, I don't really know what it was. It was a weird book and I'm not really a big fan of weird books. The only weird book I've ever really liked is Catherine House. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I guess it's just not for me and I need to stop picking up books described as weird because I'm never going to get them and I'm never going to like them. So. <laughs> I need to stop doing that. But I tell you what, this month, reading this many books has made me sick. Like, I, like I've like i really struggled with the pressure of it because normally I would read like 20 books a month anyway, but I think it's just been a really busy month for me and it was a bad month to have done it. Um, so I've really put a lot of pressure on myself to do this challenge and I'm so glad I did. And I had this rule of like no graphic novels or anything. And I'm just, excited because I've got like a poetry collection and a graphic novel that I've been desperate to read now for the whole month so I'm excited now to be in September tomorrow and be able to read them. I mean I could have read them but it was a silly rule I set myself to make sure I was reading like novels. Um, but yeah it was great. Anyway I have one more book to update you on. Then after I read Little Bird I read The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. This is trending all over TikTok right now. Um, so I picked it up and do you know it was really really good um, the one thing I will say of note which I did not realize and definitely wouldn't have picked up if I'd realized is it is fade to black and the author note basically said about how she feels like there wasn't enough fade to black material anymore and how like everything seemed a bit obscene <laughs> and I didn't realize that it would be fade to black and I didn't really love that because I am definitely a adult smutty reader but it was so cute anyway our female protagonist brie is just the nicest person on planet earth truly she is a gem i absolutely loved her from the first page like oh so cute and nathan who is a famous football player or they say football but that's that's rugby but you know americans he's a rugby player um <laughs> in america and it was just so cute it was just so cute. Yeah, I just loved them too. I really did. I just couldn't give this a five stars because I am not a fade to black person. So it's nothing against the book. I only gave it a five star because I just, I, I don't enjoy fade to black as much as I enjoy a book that, it doesn't have to be smutty, but I don't, in, I, it feels just, it doesn't feel natural to me to just be like, and then we spent the night together end of scene like i just i just don't love that kind of book so it got a four star for me in the end but i definitely recommend it it's so fun and if you are someone who doesn't like sex scenes in your book this is perfect it's an adult romance or maybe even a new adult romance i'm not sure but it's a it's a romance without the smutty part so you might love this but yes that marks the 31 books in 31 days that i read i wouldn't i don't know if it was a successful month my goal was to read all my arcs and i did not um, I have more arcs than I started with, but I did read a lot of my backlist arcs. A couple, my oldest arc I read, a couple of midway arcs that have been published. So I did a pretty good job with that, I think. Um, I just didn't quite achieve my goal of all of them, but that's fine. I did read a lot of my physical TBR, a lot of my Kindle TBR, which was good because that needed work. Um, but I wouldn't, no, I don't really know if it's successful because my average rating for the month is 3.23. That's kind of low. And I am a harsh rater, but I had a few one stars this month. Like, well, two. Well, maybe it was just one. But I had a few bad ratings. Like, I feel like it was a lot of threes going on. So it was a bit meh, but 
I'm really happy that I made some dent on my TBRs and yeah I just feel good about it all so thank you so much for joining me over the last month there's been a lot of vlogs if you are not caught up you can go and watch those other vlogs I keep touching my hair because it's wet sorry <laughs> I can't help myself um but yeah thank you so much for watching these vlogs and I shall see you in the next one when we're back to reading at a normal pace <laughs> see you in the next one bye